Okay, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the pose morph, which for our purposes today, we'll be using to set up some basic uh, facial animations for a character. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, nothing here to start with. We're gonna create everything as we go. Um, to create our basic head shape, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a sphere. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive. Uh, I will then go ahead and turn on my lines. And what we're gonna do here is not use the regular standard sphere shape, but the hexagon sphere shape, which um, uses all four-sided polygons. So a lot of good uses for this. Uh, but then what I'm gonna do is turn the number of segments here way down uh, to eight. Okay, and really what this does is it gives me my two polygons for my eyes and then the area we'll be using for the mouth right here. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn off uh, my work plane. It normally just gets in my way. And then we can rename this base and I will make it editable by hitting C uh, or coming down here and hitting make editable. With that, I'm going to go ahead and select, actually we'll start with the mouth here. And what we will do is choose inset inset our mouth to the desired amount, and then go ahead and extrude this back into place. Now, ultimately this will end up in a subdivision surface. So I can go ahead and create one, place our base mesh in that side of there. And that can be helpful as we're doing this to get a, a good idea of what our final shapes will look like. With that, we can now work on the eyes. And what we're gonna do first is go ahead and choose inset again. This time though, if we just try and inset, we're gonna end up with a, a Cyclops, which isn't exactly what we want. So we need to uncheck preserve groups. That will allow us to separate these polygons and inset them individually. And I'm looking for something similar to the amount of inset we had for the mouth and for the extrude. Actually, I'll turn on my subdivision surface first and go to extrude before kind of taking this back to get a sense of how far uh, the eyes are going to be extruded. And hopefully you can see our face coming together now. Uh, what we're gonna do to take this a step further is create some eyes. And we're gonna create some eyes just kind of from the, the eye sockets here. Since we still have these two polygons selected, I'm gonna hit U and then Y to grow that selection. Uh, and there we go, we have our, our eye sockets uh, selected, a little bit strange to say. And then we're gonna split these. So I will right click off my, my mesh here uh, and then find split, which uh, I'm having a hard time finding at this very moment. There it is, right where my mouse was. What I need to do now is go back up to my base mesh and delete, actually I don't need to delete this, um, but I will hide the base mesh so we can see what we're working with for our eyes. Now, uh, the one problem with kind of setting up our eyes like this is they're already gonna have some kind of rotation built into it because um, we created these from existing polygons and not a new shape. Um, we're not gonna get to eye setup uh, in terms of kind of getting the target uh, set up so we can, or aim constraint, where we can decide what we want the eyes to look at. This is more about facial expressions or eye shapes. So now what we need to do is separate these into um, different eyes. And I can just, let's see, switch to polygon selection, go to rectangle selection, and split one more time. So I have the left eye selected, so I'll choose split. I will then go back up to my original eye, which I should have named, so we knew what it was, but base dot one in this case, and delete. So now base one is going to be my right eye, which I'll just call right eye, and Base dot two will be my left eye. What we need to do now, and I can do this at the same time, so I will select both of these, uh, is close these up. Okay, so I'm gonna right click, choose close polygon hole, and close them up. Uh, now, if I go ahead and hit Control or Command A to select all of these polygons, you'll see the colors um, are different. Our normals are actually facing the wrong way. And to fix that, I will just right click one more time and choose uh, reverse normal. 
Okay, which is at the very bottom here. Now those are the right color, they're normals, the polygon directions are correct. I can now bring back my base and I'm gonna place both my eyes or make them a child of that. So when I turn on my subdivision surface, we can see what our eyes look like and they look pretty, pretty good. Okay, if I wanted to uh, make them a little bit bigger, I could. What we would need to do there is select uh, both eyes, go to uh, tools, choose axis, and then center axis two, so that uh, the axis is centered for each of them. Now go to our scale tool, and if we try to scale them up right now, it's gonna scale them up as a single object. So with them selected, we can just choose per object transform, and that will allow us to scale them up individually. Now this is gonna overlap a little bit, but that's fine for our purposes today. Um, we could maybe even move them a little bit forward as well. Uh, and I think that's gonna look perfectly fine for our purposes right now. While we're here, I'm gonna select the subdivision surface editor or subdivision surface object and set the number of subdivisions for the editor and render to three to smooth this out a little more. And there we go. We have our basic setup here. Now, what we can do is actually start creating our different facial expressions. So this is our base shape. We'll create one that will have sad eyes. We'll create one that has sad mouth and create another one which will have angry eyes. Now I kind of did that a little bit out of order, but uh, the important thing here with the pose morph uh, is that we are going to uh, be anim or, or changing one thing uh, in each of these uh, different um, poses, if you will, where uh, in one we'll just change the eyes, the other we'll just change the mouth. That will allow us to kind of add uh, these two poses separately and have them work together. If we try and do um, the eyes and the mouth in one, that's gonna be the only thing we can really add to that pose or that facial expression. So cool, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the base, uh, turn off my subdivision surface, and actually just hide all of these except um, the one we're currently working on, which is gonna be sad eyes. I'll go ahead and expand this because what we wanna do is make this guy look sad. And a great kind of resource for this is to go to um, you know, Google, find something like cartoon eye expressions, and you can see all the different kind of shapes we could work with here. Now, our, our eyes are really simple geometry, so getting these types of curved shapes is a little bit trickier. Uh, really what I would do for this um, is collapse down this subdivision surface so we have more polygons, then add like an FFD to the eyes and the surrounding area uh, in order to get this kind of curved shape like that. Uh, but we'll just keep it simple for today. So sad eyes, what we really need to do is take this top left corner of our eyes and bring them down. And we'll also move this to the top of our subdivision surface. So as we turn it on, we can see what this looks like. I'll select all three of my objects here, um, my face or head, the two eyes, go into point mode. And actually toggle that back off to make it easier to select all my points at once. I will also switch my display to lines so I can kind of see everything. And I'm gonna want everything in this corner and everything in that corner. Back to my rectangle selection tool, select all this stuff, select all this stuff, toggle my display back to shading, turn on my subdivision surface. Now we can see as I move this down, we get kind of sad eyes. We have to be a little bit careful though because we're kind of flattening things out. Um, I will toggle off my subdivision surface and typically what that means is I need to pull this a little bit forward on the x-axis. And I'm looking to try and just make this um, one straight line. So that's looking a little bit better. And for our purposes today, we can call those sad eyes. So that one is done. We'll now move on to angry eyes. So I'll just kind of switch the order here, move angry eyes to the top, make sure sad eyes is hidden, angry eyes is shown. And angry eyes is really just uh, the opposite where um, we're gonna take the inner part of our shape and move that down. 
like so. Lines once again. And I want all those points. And I'm going to move them down. This one I'm absolutely going to have to keep an eye on where I move this on the x-axis. Something like that I think is going to look good. You can just check. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. So we have our eyes done. Hide that. And last up, we have our mouth. Okay, sad mouth. Also pretty straightforward. This one though, I'm only gonna do something with the mouth. I'm not gonna touch the eyes. Just like previously, we've only been working with the areas around the eyes, not the mouth. So sad mouth, turn this off. A little bit easier to select our points this way. And let's see, these two corners, upper corners will come down and in. And then the bottom points will come up and forward. We end up with something like that. All right, it's looking pretty good. So now that we have all of our shapes done, I'm gonna go ahead and show all these. It's gonna look a little bit strange, but uh, we'll take our base and then Sad Mouth can come over here next. We'll move him over. You can see what that looks like. Sad eyes. And lastly, angry eyes. Now it's time to put this all together, finally, using our pose morph tag. So I can turn on my subdivision surface so we can see the result here. On our base object, I'm going to add a rigging and pose morph tag. The pose morph tag is what's going to allow us to blend and eventually animate between the different eyes we've set up or different mouths, all those types of things. So what's important to note here is our base object um, is what we started with and then duplicated uh, before pushing and pulling points to get our other facial expressions, eye shapes, things like that. With uh, the pose morph, you can't add new geometry um, to this. It has to have started as the same object. It has to have the same number of points and they have to be ordered the same way. So it's important to remember that when going through this. Now, um, we have our base shape. What I'm gonna do here is right click on it, go to rigging tags, and then choose the pose morph tag. Okay, with the pose morph tag selected, what we need to decide here is what we want to mix or morph uh, between our different facial expressions here. And the first one we'll wanna choose is points, but that's not all. The other thing we'll want to choose is hierarchy. If we don't choose hierarchy, it actually won't uh, take into account the eyes in there as well. But you can see you have other options, position, rotation, scale, parameters, as well as other types of information. Okay, once we've enabled both points and hierarchy, we can go to the tag properties. And you'll see we have our base pose, we have pose zero, which is the same thing. So I'm actually gonna delete that out. And now it's just a matter of dragging these in here. So I can drag sad mouth in here and I'll get asked if I want to do this uh, as an absolute morph or a relative morph. Absolute will want to more move everything over to where it currently is in space or relative will keep it and just use uh, what points have changed in their position. So we're gonna go with relative. We'll do the same thing for eyes, drag that in there, choose relative. Do angry eyes, drag that in there, and choose relative. Technically, you could delete these um, once you've added them, but I will just go ahead and hide them. And now we have our face. Once we're done adding poses, we wanna switch the mode here to animate. And now we have all these different sliders we can keyframe. Okay, so we have angry eyes, we could add in our sad mouth with that. And because we've separated this out, like I said, you can work with the eyes and mouth individually. And so this opens up a lot of possibilities if you were to add the different facial shapes um, or mouth shapes for um, animating that to different texts, you know, the different uh, phonemes, you know, AE, all of these types of things uh, could all be different pose morphs. And that way um, you would have the ability to 
animate this to different speech. So you can do different eyes things. The key though, is that each thing is separate, okay? The eyes are the only thing that change in the eye poses. The mouth is the only thing that changes in the mouth. Um, you know, you could do this for other parts of the face as well if you had a more complicated character, um, things such as eyebrows, eyelids, things like that, okay? Uh, keep in mind though, this is a relatively basic setup, so there are gonna be some limitations. Um, there's definitely other ways of setting up a character uh, for animation, but this is by far, in a way, the uh, the easiest is as far as I know. And so, yeah, that is, is pretty much it. You know, if we really wanted to uh, take this a little bit further, we could maybe add some quick uh, materials here. I'll create a standard material. And this will just be our kind of uh, base color. So I'll just maybe set this to a green. And now our head is green. We'll call this head. I'll drag this one down and call this black. And this will be our mouth color or inside our mouth color. So I will go into a polygon selection, make sure I have my base selected. It's almost easier to do this without subdivision surface turned on. Live selection for this. And once I've selected those two, I can then see if I wanna keep this, if I wanna grow this, maybe use that, and then drag the black on there. You can see we now have our mouth. The eyes are a little bit trickier. Um, so I'm gonna start by creating or duplicating an existing material, calling this eye white. Set the color here to white and apply this to both eyes. Um, I'm also gonna need one more material, call this eye black. And the reason why I'm duplicating this material instead of just using my existing black materials, I don't have a really good circular shape for uh, to apply for my pupil. So we're gonna kind of cheat this by coming into the color uh, part of our material and creating a gradient. In that gradient, I'm going to switch the type to circular and that's gonna give us our, our shape, but we don't necessarily want that soft edge. And there are a number of different ways to get rid of that soft edge. What I am gonna do though, is switch the type. Um, oops, not the type, but select the knot and switch it to say step. That will allow me to drag this in and now I can control exactly how big that circle is. So something like that ought to work just fine. And now I'm gonna select one of my eyes. I'm going to select just that inner polygon and apply my material to it, right? So not quite where we want it. We will switch the projection to flat and then go into texture mode here so we can start to work with this. So I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, scale it down, and we can now move this where we want. If we see this in other parts, well, Part of the problem is it got applied to the whole eye here instead of just uh, that inner polygon. Um, so we'll go back into here, make sure uh, I have that polygon selected. Do select, choose store selection. We'll even name this pupil. And then select our eye black material one more time and drag our polygon selection directly in there. So we have the eye black material on this polygon, the eye white material everywhere else. And there we go, we have one eye done. We can do the same thing for the other eye. I'm gonna do this the correct way though, by storing my selection first, naming it, taking my material, making sure I use that selection just like before, switch the projection to flat, go into texture mode, rotate this, scale it down. And what I can try here is using the properties in the coordinates tab to get something close to um, what I have for the other eye. So um, could copy the scale values, really just even that, come down here, Make sure I paste it so it's the same size. 
could also copy the Y value here so that it's at the same height. And honestly, that should do it. Turn off our shading and there we go. We can come back, kind of see what this looks like now with our different eyes now. You know, oops, we may want to do a little bit more with the pupils, have them get a little bit larger or smaller as we do this, but that's a little bit, you know, different. Um, one last thing, probably want to get rid of those things, uh, the other eyes. So in our material properties here, we can just uncheck tile. So tile, uncheck tile here. And you can see we're running into other issues as well. So definitely more to do, um, but I think this is a good place to leave this uh, for today. So uh, hopefully you appreciated this video, you liked this video. Uh, please let me know if there's anything else you wanna see and take care.